Hey everyone, welcome to part one of five with Eric Clayton. Welcome, Eric. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So you recently published a really cool book on Star Wars. Do you have a copy of that? You can wave it around, but um, it's your journey, I think it is, with Star Wars. And then you shared a couple of really excellent, <laughs> there you go, Life with the Jedi. Um, you've also written a couple of different pieces on the path of St. Ignatius with the author's journey. So let's get into that today. Let's talk about, we'll, we'll sort of be inspired by the hero's journey, you know, or the, the spiritual journey for faith-inspired authors, that kind of thing. So let's talk about the call to adventure uh, and part one. And you talked about um, uh, taking inspiration from Joseph Campbell's book on the hero of a thousand faces. So the sense that we have a destiny that challenges us to, to face a guide or face something that can feel very scary, this herald that's been, uh, you wrote about in your article. So yeah. let's dive right in, take about 10 minutes and talk about that. Yeah, sure. So, so all of my, a lot of my thinking goes through uh, the kind of Ignatian spirituality, right? I, that's my tra the tradition that I'm speaking from is the Ignatian tradition. And so I'm, I'm thinking about the hero's journey um, kind of uh, through the lens of the, of the different weeks or, or spiritual movements of the exercises. So I'll mention those kind of as we go, because I think one illuminates the other. Um, and, and in the first of the exercise or the first week of the exercises, uh, you're, you're, you're invited to kind of really sink into the chaos and suffering and sin of your own world and the world at large, right? So in reality, you're, you're, you're really meant to take a long, hard, loving look at uh, reality as it is and, and to let that affect you. Why? Not because you're supposed to be wallowing in, in shame and, and guilt and, and just, you know, kind of self-flagellation, but instead you're supposed to realize what God is inviting you from, calling you forth from, saving you from, right? Pulling you out of. That's a lot of, I think, what we see in any sort of heroic arc, hero's journey of sorts, right? Is, is your hero starts, right? Take Luke Skywalker. Your hero starts in a status quo that is unsatisfactory, right? A status quo that is um, perhaps not, uh, you know, causing great harm, although it certainly could be. But in Luke's case, right, if you look at Luke Skywalker, it's slowly eating away his soul, right? He, he wants to be doing more than moisture farming. And so the, the 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 call to adventure, right? This it, it it necessarily invites us to look at where we are, what we need to leave, right? Do is the status quo good enough? And I think as as writers, as any sort of a writer, that that's where you begin your your own writing journey, right? You, you, you know, you can speak about you know in existential terms, oh my vocation as a writer, or you can just say like any piece of writing that you decide you want to do has to start from a, a a recognition of well, what what am I looking at right now? What is the world revealing to me? What are the signs of the times trying to say to me? Um, and how am I called to respond? And will I respond? Will I will I respond to that call in a way that is going to to, uh, make good use of my gifts, my gifts as a writer, as a storyteller, as a person of faith, whatever it might be, you know, a filmmaker, a photographer, there's all sorts of different ways to tell a story. Um, well, I respond with those gifts uh, and allow that call to really pull me out of this of this moment, right? So, so that, there's there's a number of things happening here, right? But I think that that sense of 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 taking a long, hard look at what's really before us, recognizing that it's it's not it's not quite good enough, right? There's there's more that God desires of me, of the world. And then how am I uniquely positioned to respond? Mm -hmm. As somebody who's crafting fiction, you're writing fiction yourself, and a lot of people watching this are themselves writing stories and discerning their vocation as authors. And maybe it's not a vocation, it's just a hobby, and it could become something more later. What would you see or say as the um, uh, how do I say? It's like this, this summoning that we're being called to, to pay attention. And, and there's this burning in us to want to be creative and to discover what can happen when we, uh, partner with our imagination or when we develop it or use it. Um, this again, coming back, you got this fantastic quote, uh, that says the Herald, the Herald is like maybe Gandalf, right? Banging on your door. Like the life you live is not, is incomplete. Um, you're being called to something great. And so we might look at that herald and, and uh, it's often dark, loathly, or terrifying, judged evil by the world. I mean, if that isn't a hobbit's description of Gandalf, right? right? Yet, if one would follow, the way would be opened through the walls of day into the dark where the jewels glow. And it's exactly what happens to Lord of the Rings. It's what happens to, uh, well, Luke Skywalker. So thinking about that in terms of like an author now partnering, you know, with their imagination, with the Holy Spirit, with their vocation to be an author, what thoughts come to mind uh, in, in this phase of this part of the journey? 
I think we have to be attentive to our own desires, right? If, if, and again, that's very rooted in Ignatian spirituality. Be attentive to your desires. What's stirring within you? Do I have a, a, a do I feel something within me inviting me to, to write a story, to, to, to be a photographer, to do anything creative, right? If there's something stirring, that's, uh, that, that could be of God and, it, and it's worthy of our listening. And I, I, um, I, I was really struck with that quote that you wrote, read, right? That's, that's right from Joseph Campbell. I like that idea of the herald of something ugly and loathsome, right? We rarely, um, you know, by our kind of you know daily standards, we might say, "Oh no, that's that's to be discarded and 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 rejected." And yet, maybe we have to give those things another look. Those those uncomfortable desires that say, "Oh, maybe I do have to leave Tatooine. Maybe I do have to start writing that manuscript. Maybe I do need to take that course in photography." Right? Those things that we we can feel it within. I, th- I think we really can, because I think it's of God. But it's not a comfortable feeling necessarily. It's it's something that pushes us beyond um, where we might want to be. But we have to respond, right? I, I think you use the expression partnering with our imagination. I think that's exactly right, right? Because God is at work in our imagination. How else do we dream up a better world? How else do we write a world, uh, you know, that is that is worthy of spending time with characters that we might fall in love with, right? That it's all it's all the work of the imagination, and and God is in all things, right? God has to be there in in that you know kind of uniquely personal place, you know, where we're having those those great dreams and and desires kind of play out in our minds. And so, bringing it home as we talk about, I mean, we talk a little bit about authors and their creativity, but then there's also authors within our own journey, our own. Um, progress in our own spiritual lives. And it's really true, the more that you level up or the more, the deeper you get in your own spiritual life, the more insights you're going to continue to bring to your, your creativity. I love this line that you also provided in that article, uh, and I'll include the link in the description for those who want it. Destiny has summoned the hero and transferred his or her um, spiritual sense of, sense of gravity from within everything that's normal to you out into a zone unknown. And um, it's like Frodo being challenged to go, you know, dump the ring in the, the Mount Doom or, uh, you know, nuke a Death Star or something. Uh, you will only find your identity and purpose on the other side of going out into places where you've never been. So as one thinks about one's spiritual life, uh, what comes to mind? Yeah, I, I like that imagery, um, although I would probably add to it, right, that that mm-hmm. um, that has to be connected, right? That the status quo is kind of like you, you throw a, uh, you know, an anchor, to, you know, attached to that part of your soul and you have to follow it, right? It's not that suddenly you're the answer to, I never want to say the answer to all that you seek is outside of yourself, right? Cause I think there's 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 such depth of wonder and mystery within us. But yes. I like that imagery of, of, of we're leaning forward in a way, right? We're leaning into the into the world because because the world calls to us, right? And it, the, the mm-hmm. world is, is dripping with grace and wonder and God is at work. And so leaning into that, and allowing our, our kind of our, our destiny to unfold in that uh, trajectory, I, th- I think is, is a real, is, is a good thing and a spiritual thing. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, you're going out into the woods or out into the city. It could mean going into the page, going into your own kind of prayer life, going into, you know, the books you love, whatever it is, right? But I think that, um, you know, something within me calling to something within you, calling to something, you know, outside greater than ourselves. I think that's God, right? God, God is always the one inviting. And, and I think it, you know, I, I don't, I think it's not, it's not of God to sit and shelter, right? As a hobbit might, uh, in, in, in a, in a, in a hole in the ground, instead of responding to this, this scary, um, but, but, but necessary call to adventure. Yeah. And I like that point. Cause I think it's important to make as we close, there's a difference between being a hobbit and being a hermit. And the hermit is still sitting in the same place like a hobbit, but internally they have gone on very deep and wild journeys to discover Christ within them and Christ within their area. They're not sitting in a state of contentment. They're sitting in a state of contemplation, which is very, very Mm -hmm. different, you know? So, okay, so we just outlined perhaps the the wide sense of where we're going over the next couple of uh, short lessons here to the um, uh, next one we're gonna talk about is the, the status quo. Uh, And then that's going to lead into the upside down world. So stay tuned and we'll be back very soon for part two.